Welcome to another edition of ETN 2.0. We are we are with Mr. Brett McDonald here from Flames of Africa, and um, we're here to shoot the breeze with him today. Uh, Brett, why don't you tell us a little bit um, something about you? How long you have you been in the travel and tourism industry? Uh, it's a big question, Alvin. Yeah, it, I wasn't originally in tourism. I was in mining and, and transport, and ended up uh, losing a contract and having uh, thirty odd trucks stuck and needed to park them somewhere. So okay. I bought a pretty piece of land out near a lake and uh, was going to settle it as a home and ended up with lots of mates coming every weekend and uh, build a cottage for them and another cottage and uh, finally ended up being in the tourism business. So yeah, it wasn't, it wasn't out of design, but it, it was out of circumstance. But it's been a wonderful sort of 30 years in the business. That is sort of organic. You got there because it, came, uh, it un unfolded... Uh, in an organic way, which I'm seeing that you're happy where you are, which is a yeah. That's it's a good place to be, Nelson. I, um, you know, to be able to see products coming out of the ground and seeing people get happy. I mean, you know, we used to we used to transport goods and uh, and produce mining equipment. And uh, I've got to be honest with you, it made it made money, but it never it never gave you a good sort of gut feel. Uh, uh, feel good feeling, you know, and, but now when I look at people going on the products that we've created and I, I see the smiles and I get emails still years later from, from my old clients saying that, you know, we made the, the dream come true of the ultimate African holiday, that sort of stuff. It, it really, it, it's a great thing. It's like, I think that some musicians play for money, others play right. for applause. Right. And quite honestly, if I did adapt that to what we do in tourism, I play for applause. I just love it when people love what we do. I, I basically have the same conversation with the people that are in the same position as you. You have to have the passion to uh, at the end of the day make people feel good when they come to you. And when you say here, tell us what that means. Where are you? Okay, at the moment uh, <laughs> on the banks of the Chobe River, uh, it's one of the places, I don't know if I told you before, but I was a diplomat for many years uh, in 21 African countries uh, looking after, after tourism promotions. So I was blessed to go all over Africa. I've done every single country in Africa, north, south, central, and east. Mm -hmm. I haven't finished the west yet. And uh, when I saw, it's rather like when David Livingston saw the, <laughs> saw the Victoria Falls for the first time, he was just gobsmacked. But quite honestly to me, this Chobe River, it has got the highest concentration of wildlife uh, density per kilometer of any rivers uh, in, in, in the world. So, uh, you know, I sit here and the other day I had a leopard walking right next to the boat. We have over 120,000 elephants here. Some, the government of Botswana says it's 160,000. I don't know who to believe, but you know what? It's a hell of a lot of elephants. So, I mean, every day we've got, uh, we're just surrounded by this incredible diversity of wildlife. So, I've sort of made it my home between here and Cape Town. I live between the two. I can relate to that because being that I was uh, raised in Hawaii, I grew up in Hawaii, it's a perpetual feeling of you're on vacation the entire time. Be it going to high school or people that work there, there's like 10, 15 minutes away from the beach. So, but in a different uh, way, I kind of relate to what you're saying. Um, but a lot of Africa, there's a lot of, you know, records, if you may, like the one you just mentioned. Um, that's the beauty of Africa. So you're not just in Botswana, you're kind of in other places as well, if, I know, if I'm correct. Well, if you have a look on the map where, where Kasani is, we actually are right at the intersection of four countries. So uh, where I live, within 10 minutes in either direction, you're either in Botswana, Namibia, Zambia, or Zimbabwe. So uh, right where the four countries meet is actually right where my home is. I've got a home right on the rapids uh, opposite Ibalila Island, right on the Chobe River. Great tiger fishing in front of me. So it's, it's, it's a fun place to be, and uh, we've managed to put a, a number of great products together here. I, I was the original driving force behind uh, relaunching a boat called the Zambezi Queen, which has proved to be massively popular. I mean, it's one of the products that runs over 80% occupancy, um, and it's received rave reviews all over the show, so I was very proud to be involved with that. I'm now building a new lodge right on the edge of the Chobe. It's going to have 15 rooms right on the edge of the, of the river. They actually overhang the river, 
So you can sit on your balcony and put a fishing rod, a fishing line right in the water. And then um, if you catch a fish and then you throw it back. Is that the idea? Because <laughs> that's what they well, do in you can the Mazzy River. And some of them, well, some of them anyway. Well, you hook and cook, eh? Yeah, right. So. Well, you, hook, you hook and cook or you hook and let go? Which one is it? <laughs> With me, if right. it's tigers, I hook and let go. If it's bream, I hook and cook. <laughs> That's meant for you to eat it, right? Um, <laughs> yeah, I kind of I can relate to that experience because I was just in um, Zimbabwe, Zambia, where they had the United Nations World Tourism Organization's General Assembly. I actually took a day to go and visit Botswana, just on the border. Um, I got to go to the national park there, which was an amazing experience. Um, you mentioned Toby River now. I know those countries border all board, all share the same river, which is the Zambezi River. Um, pardon my ignorance here, but like, how tell me geogra uh, geographically wise, like where exactly are you in terms of your proximity to those countries? Well, when you came to the Chobe National Park, that's where the Chobe River is, and the Chobe River flows into the Zambezi right where I am, oh. right by by Kasani. So that's the confluence of the two rivers. They, they, they meet right where you came. So from Victoria Falls, it's, it's only an hour drive to where we are. So within an hour, you're in two or three different countries, and you see one of the seven wonders of the world being Victoria Falls. And in my mind, this Chobe River with its incredible wildlife, it should be another wonder of the world, quite honestly. And it's, I, then I have been on that river because um, um, I yeah, went you on... Right, you day trip. I got, to, trip would it take you to the river? I got to see one of the most fascinating things I've ever seen in my life, which was an elephant, huge elephant cross the river onto that little island there, which was like, oh, wait, I didn't know elephants could swim, but hey, that was an amazing thing to watch. So that's probably an everyday sighting for you. It is. And that, and that island that you saw there is called Sududu Island. It's, it's just packed with game. You get herds of over a thousand buffalo at a time, Three, four hundred elephants at a time, and that is where we overlook that that island from our lodge. So the lodge is built up sort of a treetop height. Um, they're all elevated, and we overlook that island. So that's our view from the lodge every day. Is what what you saw just for one day. That's that's where I we're can at. imagine. It's a bit, yeah, I wasn't quite lucky. So I wanted to see more, but that was being greedy on my part because there's a lot to see. You can never have. You can never cease to find wonders in, in, in Africa. It's, you have the most beautiful sunsets. Uh, you're blessed by that every day. And um, I think that's an amazing thing. Now, um, no, tell no. me, you said you were born in uh, Zimbabwe. Correct, yeah. Um, do you want to talk about that briefly? Uh, like uh, what the, your history is like there and what your experience was? Well, listen, I, look, I, I love Zimbabwe and I love the Zimbabwean people. Um, I built a safari lodge there when I was in my 30s. I still got that. That's a, it's, a, it's got two conference centers. It's on the, on the edges of a lake there. Um, I, love the, I love the country, absolutely. Um, we've still got a houseboat on, on uh, Lake Kariba called the Lady Jacqueline. It's a 65-foot uh, cruiser oh. with all the whistles and bells, air conditioning and jacuzzi and all the rest of it. Wow. Um, and we hire that out. That, that goes to an exclusive use only. So I don't share it. It's not like the Zambezi Queen where you can hire a cabin. Right. That boat, you hire the whole boat. But it actually works out way cheaper than, than any of the other bigger boats we have to share with people. And I think having... Uh, cabin space for 10 people and uh, I, there's times I don't want to be with other people there's times I want to just be with my, with my friends and family and eat when I want sleep when I want, get entertained when I'm bored and uh, a boat like the Lady Jacqueline does exactly that you can uh, you have it just yourself and the nice thing about Bingo where we moor the boat is only 290 kilometers on a good tar road from Victoria Falls so, so it's an easy transfer how long is the journey? Okay. It, we, we allocate four hours because there's two escarpments which are so beautiful uh, that it's a pity to just race through that countryside. And it's really primitive countryside. The, the little villages there are it's the Tonga people. And you're going through these villages that haven't changed in, in, in thousands of years, literally. It's, it's a way of life that is just, you know, still in time. So the trip to the boat and back is absolutely fascinating. 
We try and sell it including Wangi National Park, so we then do a circuit, which is uh, Victoria Falls down to Wangi. It's only 160 kilometers to Wangi, so that's two hours. We're overnight two nights in Wangi, which is an incredible national park, and then go down to the Lady Jacqueline, which is another 160k, so it's only a two-hour trip again. Um, then on your last day after breakfast, you can make it very easily. If you have a, a breakfast, leave the boat at half past eight, nine o'clock. You can still get back to Victoria Falls in time for your flight back out to, to Joburg or wherever. So it makes a really lovely little circuit there. Okay, so give me that um, itinerary and um, the, okay, the typical itinerary and who your typical customers are and who do, who do you want to reach out to? Well, I tell you, Nelson, um, at the moment, to be honest with you, most of my clientele is from South Africa. Mm. And that's only because the word hasn't got out. You know, if you had to think to yourself, you can be sitting on a 65-foot luxury cruiser, as I said, with aircon and, and a chef and a, and a, and a deckhand captain, um, the whole nine yards, and you're paying like $1,000 a night for the whole boat, not per person, man, for the whole boat. It's, you know, you start looking at what it costs you in Europe. I did a trip where I, I, tried, I got a, a skipper's ticket and we chartered a yacht. I mean, we were, we were getting absolutely hammered by, um, you know, the costs were, were, were astronomical. I was paying five times for a little self-sailing yacht. Now, no tender boats, okay? You get a little inflatable just so you can get across to, to the shore. Right. Um, I've got two speed boats that go with. Um, and I look and I think to myself, this is, this is just a must. I mean, people, if they know that they could be on a lake that's 240 kilometers long, it's 47 kilometers wide, it's like an inland sea. Uh, you can see the big five from the shoreline. The fishing is incredible. I mean, this whole thing is a no-brainer. But it just needs, the message needs to get out there. So maybe that's, that's a job for Nelson. Yeah. Is it typical that, that that in itself is a day um, tour or day trip? Because four hours in, four hours back, is that, or how does that work? No, out? no, no, no. What I'm saying, no, no. It's, a, it's that house boat has got cabins. So you go and... So you can stay here and night? As long as... Is oh, that offered? Yeah. Is, is so it a night off? Like there, but... Yeah, so you go, it's, it's overnight option, that's the whole thing, is that you go and sleep on board and uh, spend three, four nights on the lake. It's got lovely cabins, and uh, so it's like a little mini boutique hotel on water. And uh, for those, uh, are they seasonal rates as well, or do you, what factors do people that are interested in taking on this experience have to consider? No, there is no seasonality, we charge the same rate any month of the year. It, it doesn't make any difference. What we do, with, there, are, there are two master suites on this boat, which is unusual. Most boats have only got one master. When I built this one, I made sure it had two masters so that uh, if you share it between two families or two lots of friends, mm -hmm. there's no arguments as to who's, who's got the best cabin. Right. Because the forehead section is a beautiful um, cabin with ensuite bathroom, and aircon, etc. in the front, and another one identical at the back. And then in the middle, there's two midships cabins uh, that can be used for, for children or even adults, but they're Pullman style, so they, they got bunk beds, okay, the mm -hmm. middle cabins. Right. So if you have two families, let's say grandpa and granny, they're in the front, mom and dad at the back, and kids in the middle, works like a dream. Or two different families can share the boat, and each has got the same sort of luxury. What's the total occupancy for um We could take 10 people. Oh, 10, so it's... It's, it's 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 a small um, deal, but you kind of that probably what makes it good because it's intimate and um, absolutely the service, right. Well, it's sixty-five. It's sixty-five foot long and it's three stories. It's got three decks. <laughs> so you've got a, you've got cabins at the bottom, uh, midships. You've got a, a dining room, saloon um, area with uh, TV and video and all the rest of that sort of stuff. Um, and then on the upper deck, you've got a, uh, a sun deck and uh, a bar and a dining area. And then there's another, in the front, you've got the jacuzzi. I'll send you a photograph. Uh, um, sure, please. Please do. I was just on a um, cruise on the Nile River, and that went on for at least three or four days, I believe. And that was a, a great experience. So, if uh, three or four nights, at night time, what kind of entertainment or... Uh, what, what options do you offer for your guests? 
Well, I tell you what, my captain, well, firstly, the chef is brilliant, okay, so your dinner is going to be scrumptious, but then the, the captain has been trained on the star, I would say, he'll do a whole stargazing thing and teach the people how, in the southern hemisphere, you can navigate by stars, he tells them the folklore about how the people in the area before the white people came along and came with calendars, how they knew when to plant, when to prep the land, etc., by using the, the passage of the stars across the heavens, the night skies. And really, just sitting out there, we some nights, if we're on an island, we'll park up against an island and we'll do a, a bonfire on the beach and then have a, a their dinner will be cooked on, on the coals on the, on the beach. And people love sitting on the sand around a fire and the flickering light up against the boat is actually beautiful. All right, I can, I've, I've had that experience, so I can, I can relate to it. Um, so your typical three or four night, um, a maximum of ten, and that um, do you, do you want to mention the rate for that, or is that something that you want people to go to your website to? Well, no. Listen, they uh, I can mention the rate. The first four people pay two hundred and fifty dollars each because they're in the luxury cabin, shall we say? And that two hundred and fifty includes everything: food, uh, booze, um, the, All inclusive. the the full, the whole shooting match. Then the next up to the next six people take it up to ten because they're in Pullman cabins and you pay a hundred dollars each. So I mean, it works out really, really reasonable. So, um, tell me about the name Flame of Africa. Ah, interesting bit of history on that. In 1957, uh, Flame Lily Holidays was started uh, in what was then known as Rhodesia, oh. and uh, that was the first package holiday uh, business in, in Southern Africa. And uh, I went on to buy the branding for that many, many years ago as Flame Lily Holidays. Um, but it was tied to Air Zimbabwe at the time. And uh, sadly, there was quite a became years. Zimbabwe. Oh. Sorry? Rhodesia became Zimbabwe. It became Zimbabwe, yeah. So uh, then, unfortunately, uh, Air Zimbabwe stopped flying between Victoria Falls and Johannesburg, which is the most important tourist route. And uh, the connotations of being an Air Zimbabwe branded, tied up business uh, became a problem. So then I opened Flame of Africa, which uh, still carried a little bit of the original branding right. and the original concepts, but it still has the same ethos behind it. And you're still in business, which means you're, doing, you you're doing it right. Um, we trying to get right. yeah, yeah. Flameofafrica.com is your domain, correct? Correct. Um, what, talk about that website a little bit and um, what it offers and what they can find in there. Basically, Sub-Saharan Africa. Um, we are really, really good in Botswana, Namibia, Zambia, and Zimbabwe. We are absolutely experts in that area, there's no doubt. Um, we also do sell Mauritius and the other islands. Um, we do sell South Africa. But really, if somebody wants the best advice on those four countries, they need to look no further than us. We're a sole ownership business. We have no shareholders and partners in Flame of Africa. Um, what's lovely is that we have got a very good DMC uh, footprint. Um, we own a fleet of 28 vehicles. We've got 16 boats um, based in Botswana and Zimbabwe. So we're a, we're a bit of a one-stop shop. We do everything from ticketing, transfers, tours. Uh, we own our own safari lodges. Um, we've got another lodge that I built up in Uganda that I've got partners in and as well, a gorilla tracking lodge, um, which was originally uh, built 12 years ago. So we've got yeah, Uganda gorilla tracking option, which is in-house, uh, the new lodge on the Chobe, which is, uh, we'll, we'll be opening in November, um, the lodge in Harare, the boat in Kariba, um, and then, of course, lots of vehicles and boats. So we can do anything in this area. Okay. Talk about the safari ex experience a little bit. We talked about the river cruise. Talk about the safari experience a little bit because when people want to come to Africa, for those that are, have not been to Africa, why should they pick you as a company to go to? I think that that's quite simple. Um, if you look at it, you know, if you look at my website, the opening banner says, in Africa, it's not what you know, it's who you know. <laughs> right. that I makes actually it. saw that. Explain that. Okay. Well, do you have right. a little story about that? <laughs> A simple thing. Let me just look at this as an example. Um, during the, the Soccer World Cup, mm -hmm. tons of people came out to Africa. 
They didn't have their visas sorted. People got stuck all over the show. There was there was just mayhem. I'm not going to the visa re- what the visa regimes and the, 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 there's certain it's, it's restrictions. Just right. And people don't realize that, especially when these four countries meet, for instance, some people will say, oh, we'll collect you at the Kazangula border post. People don't realize there are four Kazangula border posts. Right. There's Kazangula Zambia side of the mm-hmm. river, Kazangula Botswana side of the river, Kazangula Road, which is what you did when you came on your day trip, right. Botswana side, and Kazangula Road, Zimbabwean side. Now, the agents overseas don't realize this, and they just say, oh, please pick them up at Kazangula Border Post. Now, trust me, right. it's chaos. So what I'm saying, what happens is that people get a hold of us, and we sort it out. Okay, right. We hear, I know I can pick up the phone to the head of immigration in any one of these countries that people are stuck, and I can say, please help us out here. They know me, and right. we, can, we can make arrangements, where a lot of other people can't. And I just think... Having the right people on the ground makes a difference. Wow. All my vehicles go to our radios in them. My drivers know what they're doing. Um, we just make it happen. We, you know what? You just when you send people to Africa, there's already a, a resistance. They're worried right. from a say, you know, are they going to get picked up, etc. They just know that um, that they can uh, get hold of us, and we will then. Make sure everything happens. Right. I've actually just got my PA saying to me at the moment, I've got a flight that's leaving in 35 minutes to Mount, which I'm going to have to grab just now, now since I can't be too much longer. Okay, okay. But um, the, sorry about that. You, you, you mentioned the government. I mean, you, you were able to, like, it's not, it's who you know. That's what the thing is said. So tell me, so, um, so you do have partnership with the public um, entities to help you make things happen, as you said. I wouldn't say partnerships, but I tell you what, in my cell phone, when I see you in, 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 in Berlin, I'm going to show you my cell phone, I've got over 3,500 contacts in there. Wow. So basically, if, 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 if I, let's just say that, that something goes wrong and uh, somebody's flight was delayed or whatever and they miss a flight, right. they should confirm me and say, Brett, listen, my clients have got a, a you know, they've been upset, they were, uh, the, the flight didn't take off, whatever. I can get hold of the general manager at any one of these hotels, and they know me so well, or even the owners of the hotels. I would say, listen, I've got a problem. Nelson got left behind. Please make sure there's a bottle of champagne in the room. Okay. And that's when it'll happen. You spoke ITV. I don't want to press you some more, but you talk about your uh, ITV presence this year. What, what have you got that's cooked up? Okay. ITV, I'm going to be on the Botswana stand. So just make your way through to the Botswana stand. We would love to be able to sit down and, and, and chat with you. So... Yeah, if I'm not there, my wife Jackie, who's the brains of the operation, she'll be there. So one of us will be at the ITV Botswana stand, Flame of Africa, love you to pop by. Let me show you exactly what we've got on offer. And flameofafrica.com is your website. That's it. All right, Brad, I won't keep you any much longer. Thanks for shooting the breeze with Easy Answer Point. Have a good day. Have a wonderful day. See you in Berlin.